and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO at DVS, and today we're gonna to take a look at a brand new product, part of the part of you range from Hike Vision. It's a double camera in one single housing, bi-directional part of you, one single housing. Great, great idea from Hike Vision. So I'm gonna take it out the box. So what do you get in the box? This new color scheme box. Um, starting to see that come through a lot, lovely product. So you get your mounting template, CD manual, normal uh, screwdriver, take that out in preparation, and then a lens cleaning cloth. Now, inside the box itself, you get this dual lens pan of you. Now, this is the uh, size of an iPhone 11, so you can see it's about the size of an iPhone 11 Pro, uh, quite a small unit. It weighs about two to three kilograms, quite a substantial unit. I mean, if I was to take that and swing it, um, I could probably kill somebody, so um, stay away. Um, really well built. It's a very strong construction. As you can see, two lens assemblies in one housing. So you've got a fly lead that comes out of the back. It's already made. Um, it's got your PUE, 12 volt DC, audio in, audio out, alarms in and out, etc. This model has got two built-in microphones, so it's the IHS model. Um, so it's got two built-in microphones. You can see mic one, mic two, they're on the side there. Two little holes, two little mic holes there. Um, rigid back with the cooling fans. This isn't detachable, so you need to actually feed that through the hole, um, the cavity or whatever, false ceiling. Really good for like retail, hotels, corridors, that kind of thing. So one camera and two views. I'll just take the lid off quickly. Um, so give me two seconds. Okay, so we've taken the cover off now uh, for security screws on the front. You can see there's two cameras in there um, with the IR LED assembly around the out, uh, edge. Um, fully adjustable, so they rotate, tilt, and turn, so free axis adjustment on there. And you can see there's a little locking screw above each one. So once you get the camera in position, you simply tighten that Phillips screw, which then um, actually locks the camera in situ. Got a reset button in there, so hold and reset for default. And you've also got a micro SD card slot built inside the housing as well. Uh, debug port, and that's about it really. Don't really know, need to know much more. So we're gonna set this up now. Um, this is a 2.8mm lens, they are a 2.84mm, 6mm, 8mm. Um, we're only stocking a 2.8mm, we think that's going to be the most popular based on our um, feedback and information. We're going to fit this up on the board here and join us when we come back on the web browser. Let's say, see you in two seconds. Okay, and welcome back. So I have fitted this uh, dual lens panel view behind me. Uh, just a note, there are two versions available, um, not only in different lens sizes, but different resolutions. We've gone for the 8 megapixel uh, version, so both lenses are 8 megapixel. There is also a 2 megapixel option available, should you require a lower res image. So you can see here, if I just press play, the both images will load. You can see eight megapixel version here. So there's me, hello. Bit of a delay on Internet Explorer, but you can see the general gist of it. Two cameras, one housing, both ultra high resolution. So if I do that, you can see eight megapixel there. Come back. And again, on this one. So we'll stop that. So if I go into configuration, there are some little neat things about this camera. This is the complete model number. So it's the eight megapixel version, but again, two megapixel is, is available. And that is the latest firmware that is available today. Again, always check that you're on the latest firmware um, for whatever reason, bugs, features, functionality, improvements, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so general standard web browser functionality. So you've got all of the uh, features that you come to love and uh, understand so your ip address here what i have done on this i put an email address in here and um, you can put it platform access so high connect if you want i'm not going to do that right now and um, but you can have it added to high connect video and audio so again it has a built-in microphone on both channels so select camera one i selected video and audio for mainstream and for substream again i keep going over this but on the app if you use the default stream as substream, which it loads by default, 
um, you'll see there's no audio. Then we get a phone call, and it's because you've only enabled it on the mainstream. So please enable it on mainstream and substream. You can see there it's set at 8 megapixel, but you can reduce if necessary. And I've set this at 12 frames a second, although it can go up to 25 frames a second. Uh, 3072 H65, and you can have um, different uh, settings past that. Um, you'll notice there's no H265 plus on this, just H265. Uh, again, same with the second camera, adjust that as needed. I've set them both the same, so both 8 megapixel, both 12 frames a second with H265 enabled. For the audio, again, uh, choose mic in or line in. So if you want to use an external microphone, choose line in, input volume, and then environmental noise filter, which tries to cut down electronically some background noise in your region of interest if needed. And the image settings, again, pretty straightforward. Wait for this to load. Each camera is set independently. So you've got camera one and two selectable from the drop down box. Again, different scenes, so customized for each scene out of the box. Again, if none of those work, adjust as necessary. And you can see pretty much default what you come to expect from the camera. OSD settings, again, putting the OSD settings in there. So your name, date, etc. What I've done on here is customize the text. So you can choose camera one or camera two, and I've chose custom font color and chose our DVS green on camera one. And then camera two, I chose a red color just so you can make it a little bit different. Or if you want to make that text stand out, because it could be a company name, set of instructions, a phone number, uh, something that you really want to be visible in the video. Privacy mask and picture overlay. What I have done is on camera two, it's very small, but on camera two, I have put a little picture in picture. No, nope, sorry, it's on camera one. You'll see there's a little DVS down there. So I uploaded a BMP file, enabled it, dragged it to where I want to click save. So that'll appear in the image. You can make that as big or small as you want. Um, I just made it a little small image, but uh, again, do what you need. And the image parameter switch, you can actually choose, uh, enable that, and then choose which scene is linked to a different time so if you've got different times where a different set of parameters or for the video parameters would kick in adjust it as per this menu it is quite helpful if you've got vastly different um, parameters for the day and the night then set the schedule in here to follow that and you can set each camera independently uh, under the event, you've got the normal motion detection, video tampering, alarm input, alarm output, and exception. And then again, both cameras are selectable. Armor schedule and linkage actions as per norm. Under the smart event, smart events currently are linked to camera one, and I can't change that. It, you can see that it's not changeable between camera one or camera two. So you can only select camera one as the smart event camera essentially so you may need to position it in a way that camera one is the one that is detecting the area that you want but you can see there's quite a few uh, vca rules that have been added to this model uh, you don't have to use them all but you've got audio exception so audio exception detection um is a sudden increase or sudden decrease in sound um then you've got scene change intrusion detection and again these are standard vcas You've got up to four intrusion areas, four line crossing, four region entrance, four region exits. We've got a loitering detection. So under loitering detection, this is new to the range, and I think this will start coming in across more models or the higher end models for sure. So basically, I've enabled it. You've got four areas. I just drew an area, drew the threshold, so it's five to ten seconds. Click save, and you just, uh, basically any human or vehicle in this area for more than five seconds will trigger the linkage action and in this case it's notify surveillance center and send email and then an arming schedule i'll show you that working in a second people gathering detection again another new vca rule so draw your area and then you've got percentage up to 100 um so again if that's applicable to you fast moving detection so an object that's moving fast like a vehicle or a human running Parking detection, again, draw an area and how long that 
object is in the area, like a vehicle, which will raise an alarm. Because it could be a fire exit or a main entrance that you're not allowed to park inside. These cameras are IP rated, so they can be fitted outside. One thing I would say is the IR is inside the housing, not outside of the housing. So you may need to clean the camera or position it so the infrared doesn't give any uh, IR issues. Um, they are optimized for that use, but again, they're not as good as an IR that's external to the housing. So just a little side note, and you've got unattended baggage and object removal. Now what I am gonna do is click on live view. If I view, go to the live view and do the lightning detection. Camera one, live view this. So here's my area. I'll go and stand in that area. Uh, and you'll see the area will go red. I'll just turn this round so I can see. There we go. So that's gone red. What that will do now is send an email. So you get an email saying, look, you're in detection and you get three snapshots. So you get to see the objects within that field of view at that time. So pretty straightforward. And again, there's our little DVS symbol down there. Um, there's my Milwaukee drill, best tools you can buy. Um, other than that, I think that's really it. So anything you need to know, uh, please contact us at DVS, uh, our sales staff. We're still operational. Uh, anything you want, uh, video suggestions, any comments or feedback, just use webinar at dvs.co.uk. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're staying safe. Uh, we appreciate all your support, all the kind words you've been offering. Stay safe, stay tuned, stay subscribed. We'll see you next week for another how-to video. Cheers, guys, and stay safe.